everybody listening deserves absolutely everything they have. Yeah. No matter what's happened in your life, no matter where you are now, no matter what you've done, no matter what you haven't done, whatever you are wanting to do, be, do or have in your life, you deserve it. You know, because the mind starts to say, no, you don't deserve it. Yeah. You know, you didn't do anything for that. You know, that's not right. You shouldn't have that. Maybe. It was me believing in what I was doing that brought about the success, not the physical work. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Millie in the house. All right. <laughs> I appreciate that. The carnivore diet. Because of the meat. Honestly, you've really touched my heart. I can't tell you how much my listeners need some mindset work. They need oh, some absolutely. new ways. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. this everybody I'm, does. Everybody yeah. does. You know, yeah. unless they've done a lot of internal work um, on the mind. Yeah. Everybody, the mind will get you in the end. Yeah. <laughs> it yes, will. it will. Yes, it's, it will. Which it's, is why it's, it's, to quote to quote Pretty Woman, it's a slippery little sucker. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Which, which is why yeah. I can't wait to have this conversation because um, I've been a fan of The Secret for a while, and uh, I still, yeah, I still have some work. To, I have a lot of work to do, so I, I'm excited to jump into this. And and I have to start off. I got to tell you a story. I'm sure people tell you this all the time about their secret story. Right. But I got I got to start with my secret story. Uh, so I'm 51 now. Uh, when I was in college, so I was 18, 19 years old. I was a competitive tennis player, and we had a sports psychologist come to our team, and he said, "Hey, I want to do some visualization with mm -hmm. you guys. Who's up for it?" And everybody was like, "No, that's crazy." And I was like, "I'm up for it. But do it with me." And he had me put a visualization of my own voice of like my perfect match. And I would walk around with my little Walkman on and I would do this. And it was the best season I'd ever had. I was winning match after match. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really understand why. I just thought this guy did something crazy to me and it's making magic happen in my life. And then when the secret came out, I was like, that's what he did. Exactly. Exactly. Oh Cause sports, sports psychologists are really onto that and uh, using visualization. And I mean, it was even used for the NASA astronauts as well. But I remember there are two Australian girls, volleyball players, not at all favorites for the Olympics or anything. And so they visualized winning gold. And what they did was other than visualizing, they, they put, and bought as many gold things as they could possibly find mm -hmm. and they filled their apartment with gold gold everywhere gold statues everywhere and visualized and they won gold crazy and they knew they absolutely knew that it was because of the internal work that they'd done so it all, all starts inside and then projects on the outside yeah, yeah and, and so it's like so simple and so difficult all at the same time <laughs> And when the secret came out, I, we played it in my waiting room in my office. Any new staff member that came on onto my team, they had to watch it. It just was how we started being able to communicate with each other. But can we start with like, how does this work? And why can't we do it all the time? Why do we get tripped up? And, and right. if it works once, why doesn't it work every time? Right. Well, it's working all the time. Mm. It's, it's just that we're creating a lot of the time we're creating what we don't want and so we're energizing thoughts of things that we don't want and then they will manifest so we are actually creating every single second of every day that we're awake we are creating so we're either creating what we want or what we don't want we're creating the appearance and manifestation of something or the absence of it mm. and the absence of it comes about from not believing that you can have it or not believing that you've got it already which is what we need to do because in manifesting you need to take time out of the equation I mean time is just relative it's for laws time doesn't exist you know there's no time for the law of gravity and so and so when you want to manifest something you have to 
see it as having it now, as you would have done with your visualization, mm. right? You were seeing yourself playing the perfect match before mm-hmm. you played the perfect match. Mm. So that's the way that it works. And so people have to, what we have to do is use the mind for what it was, what it was created for, which was to, to create, be, do, and have all of the things that we want to be, do, and have in this physical world. And then really do some internal work so that we don't energize thoughts that we don't want, yeah, you know, hard. and, and the mind, if, if you haven't done any internal work and managed to get yourself to a place where you've created a little bit of separation between you and thoughts so that you can see your thoughts rather than being your thoughts, right? Rather than being hypnotized by your thoughts. Because a lot of the time we are just creating, it's just sloppy thinking really. We're mm. just creating, we get caught up in a conversation and we're, we're like, you know, caught up in a drama and we're talking about all of the things that we don't want. We're talking about sickness. We're talking about disease. We're talking about well, all of the things we don't want. And as we speak of those things, we're bringing them to us. So, so all of this is just... Uh, it, this has been known for thousands of years. I mean, you go through all of the spiritual traditions, they just had different ways of expressing it, but it's the same thing. And it's a mental universe. That's the easiest way for me to put it. Yeah. You know, it is, is everything is mind. Yeah. It's all mind. Yeah. So. It, and yet the, what I, my experience with using the tool is that sometimes the absence of what you're trying to create in your life and it's not showing up and it's not showing up and you're trying to, you know, think a little harder and think a little harder. Let me get my mind. And that just creates more resistance. Yes. So yes. how do we, and then I, I, I like what you said about when we start talking about the absence of it, we just magnify the energy of the fact that it's not there. That's right. What do we do in that moment? Do we just stop and go, what am I doing? Do we have tools to retrain our thinking? When that yeah, happens, because, because we are actually the most powerful being in the universe and we can manifest anything, anything, absolutely anything, with just a single, um, a single thought that we don't contradict. Mm. So one thought, one effortless thought, we just think it. And if we don't contradict that thought, it absolutely must manifest. The problem is, is that we think about what we want. And then, as you say, we're like, it's not here yet. And the moment we say that, you know, because we believe that there's belief behind that. It's not here yet. Straight away, you cancelled out the manifestation. You created a new one. It's not here yet. And that will keep manifesting. It's not here yet. It's not here yet. It's not here yet. When is it going to show up? When is it going to show up? All of that, you, we will keep perpetuating that absence of it. And so, and so one thing that I used to do was if I would find a thought or think, oh, it's not here yet or whatever, I would just use that uh, to reaffirm that I have this already, Mm. that I already have it and get that feeling that I already have it and just really, really sit with that feeling. And I mean, sometimes we have beliefs like I don't deserve it or, you know, you've, you've got a struggle to get anywhere, you know, nothing comes easy, you don't get things for free, all of those thoughts. You have to work hard for money. Yep. You've got to struggle. All of those things. None of those things are true. Absolutely none of them. And we know because if you look in the world, there are people who don't work hard and struggle and they've got abundance. Yep. You know, so it doesn't apply to everybody. It just depends on what our belief is. And so it's worth putting in the work on um, noticing the language that we use, how we talk, and then picking ourselves up and saying, whoa, that's a belief. You know, mm. I do believe you have to work hard and struggle. Mm. I do. That's a belief. And really kind of see that actually isn't a real thing. It's just a belief that I have, but it will manifest itself always until we let the belief go. And so, and so, yeah, so what I do to manifest, I mean, I just 
it's easier than we think it is. It's way easier. All you have to do is have an image of what you want and feel good about that. And for it to be effortless, mm. like effortless, like the lighter you can make it, the faster it will manifest, you know, whereas if we're like this, like all kind holding of, on. Yep. yeah, hold it, then, then we're contracted, we're resisting and resistance stops all manifestation. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what, what's the, what's the difference between effortless and detached? Are they the same thing? So, you know, what's the best thing that you could be is like, um, wouldn't it be lovely if I had a new car? Wouldn't that mm -hmm. be lovely? That is a real effortless thought. That has Got no it. resistance in it because you're just like, oh, wouldn't that be lovely to have a new car, um, a white one, a Porsche, uh, you know, <laughs> universe, I don't want a Porsche. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful what you say now, huh? <laughs> Um, but if it's really effortless like that, so sometimes if we say, wouldn't it be nice, that can kind of remove some of the resistance mm. that we have. Whereas, you know, if we're, if we're saying, oh, I have a new white Porsche and your subconscious mind says, no, you don't, that's a lie. <laughs> and you're like, yes, I do. I have it. I feel it. I'm driving it. I got it. Yeah. And so, so you have to be light and playful with it. And yes, it's like light as a feather. Um, yeah. It's the, it's a truly is the lightest touch. Right. Yeah. And that's how we're creating all the time. Yeah. You know, if you think about, if people think about um, a circumstance, for example, you might be walking down the street and you think of somebody you haven't seen for ages and they ring on your phone or you see them across the street. And you had thought, the thought, it was really effortless, right? It was, mm. it was just a thought that comes in and goes out and it was effortless. And next thing the person rings, you're like, oh, I can't believe it. I was just thinking about you, you know? And, and so it was an effortless thought. It manifests mm. really, really fast. So mm. the lighter that we can be, the number, number one thing is everybody listening deserves absolutely everything they want yeah deserve it you deserve it <laughs> totally absolutely completely deserve it no matter what no matter what's happened in your life no matter where you are now no matter what you've done no matter what you haven't done whatever you are wanting to do be do or have in your life you deserve it just have to you know because the mind starts to say no you don't deserve it yeah. you know you didn't do anything for that you know that's you know that's not right you shouldn't have that you know you have to um you have to work really hard to make your company successful you don't have to work seven days a week little sleep you know, yeah. and then you have a lot of people saying, you know, oh, I, I, I got a, I did really well, but I worked really, really, really hard, yeah. and I've done both. Okay, mm -hmm. I have worked really, really, really hard, thinking that it was the working really, really, really hard that brought about the success. It wasn't. It was all the mental that brought about the success. Amazing. It was me believing in what I was doing that brought about the success not the not the work not the physical work have you ever had that moment where you have a thought about something you'd love to see show up in your life and you just feel it in your core like like i he i've heard you talk about the secret like you just knew it was going to be success yeah and i know that when i get to that place i know it's coming it's like yeah. i feel it. but then there's times that i'm like i really want this thing but i can't get my body to I can't embody it. Yeah. Are there are there techniques we use, or is that when you really just start to put your focus on things that make you happy and stay in gratitude, so that you can just keep in the energy of manifestation and not feel resistance? I think you gave the perfect answer. I that feeling of knowing is what you're talking about. Yeah. There's nothing better than that. Yeah. Absolutely nothing better. Um, you just know it's you just know it's going to manifest it's just uh, um, and with the secret yes I did know I I knew exactly what it was going to, what it was going to do so um, 
And you know what? I don't get that knowing feeling on everything. Mm. I can get a very strong belief, mm. but not that knowing on absolutely everything. Um, and so it, it is best to just stay in gratitude, mm. to feel really good, to just be happy. and Because that kind of keeps you away from the resistance of I don't have it yet. Yep. And so just being happy. And I mean, if we wanted to manifest something and we felt that I'm going to be happy whether I'm happy whether I get it or whether I don't it will manifest in a flash amazing if we really really feel that way oh I'm I'm happy no matter what you know if if it happens great if not that's fine too it'll manifest really fast because we have zero resistance yeah right zero yeah. What so you, it's a, that's really what it's all about is resistance. Yeah. And I, and I've yeah. observed that in my own life. Um, I studied Abraham Hicks for a little while and, you know, oh, she, yeah. they, they talk about that. And it is when I feel resistance towards something, I go up, oh, you're not, this is not the path you want to be. So a trick that I've yeah. learned is, okay, I'll scan the things in my life and I'll say, what excites you right now? And I'll just obsess on that thing so I can take my focus off of trying to solve problems. Is that being yeah. Pollyannish or is, no. it, is it part of a manifestation just to totally make a different turn with your mind? No, I think it's, I, I think it's a really great idea. Um, I don't have anything. I, I don't have a problem with Pollyanna, actually. <laughs> I love <laughs> I, She's I a friend love, of yours, huh? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I love that Walt Disney movie. <laughs> I, really, I really did. Um, you know what? We're not meant to suffer. We really are not meant to suffer. And if, if we focus on the things that we see as wrong or the things that we think are problems or we'll suffer and we're mm. not meant to. So we are absolutely going down the wrong path when we do that. And I would say anything that has us feel better, um, whatever path that is, whatever we choose to do to feel better is so much better for our life because when we're happy, we're actually on the frequency of everything that we want, right? Mm. All the things that we want to make us happy are on the frequency of happy. Mm. And so when we're happy, like that's, I think I wrote in the secret, the shortcut to get whatever you want is to be happy now. Mm. And when Love you're that. happy now, you know, everything, everything just comes. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I think any path, I think what what you were doing was a really great thing to do and, yeah, anything to not suffer or uh, unnecessarily, I say, don't suffer at all, actually. Yeah. And I've done a lot of suffering <laughs> yeah. in, in my life, but it was through all of that suffering that I decided I'm not going to suffer anymore, no more. I'm going to find the truth so that I don't suffer anymore. Mm, yeah. Love that. Do you, you, don't, you don't ever get a suffering thought in a day? No, no. That's no. and how many years has that been? Is that are we talking decades? You've had that thinking? No, you know, no, probably five years. Okay, five years. I've been what four, four years? What are we? It's beginning of two sixteen. So five years, and I've been working on it since then. And of course, with the secret, I already became very, very aware of my thoughts. Mm because I knew without a doubt that that thoughts manifested. And even at that time, I didn't understand the enormity mm. of reality and the universe and how it is all mind. And I remember I used to say everything is mine, but now I understand that at a whole new level. Mm. So, um, so I just think if we can, um, you know, uh, I don't know, I lost my trade of thought then because I completely digress, but uh, no, yeah. it, no, I don't know I, where I was. I don't know where I was. Well, one of the things that's that one you, other good, what's one other good thing <laughs> when you, when you not allowing the mind to run you, run ah. you, um, you, you don't, you can't sort of pluck on memory so much anymore because memories, some of our memories are not, uh, and that's a lot of work I've done too, is letting go of of memories mm. that, uh, you know, one would consider traumatic memories and also letting go of those as well. So 
Um, yeah, so anyway, I, I do remember now, <laughs> five years, um, five years working on it. And it's just bit by bit, just letting, really I've been just releasing and letting go for the last mm -hmm. five years. But um, but it doesn't take five years. I mean, the, the, the teacher who, Lester Levinson, who, who taught releasing and letting go, he um, did it in three months. Wow. You know, so I took, I, I, I took a long time to do it. Yeah. But already within a really short amount of time, you notice that um, you're not buying into things so much anymore. And mm. so while my thinking was very positive from the secret and I was very aware of my thoughts, by the time I got to 216, there were things that were happening that were outside of my creation. Mm. You create your own reality and you can't create in somebody else's. So I had a lot of very difficult situations that were out beyond my creation. And that is what had me seek how can suffering end forever? Yeah. Um, which is which yeah, you've which wrote. You've, got to. Yeah. And you've written about it in The Greatest Secret. And yeah. uh, I want I want to talk a little bit about that because it, th thank you for sending me the book. I, I oh, devoured yes. that. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah. oh, that's wonderful. Oh, hi, I, I highlighted oh. it, marked all the oh, I was like, oh good. my gosh, this is, it, again, you, you were quenching my thirst for an elevation of, of my thoughts. And oh, wow. I had been asking myself if there was a different way I could look at my thoughts, if it wasn't all about controlling my thoughts. And what I no. gleamed from The Greatest Secret is we are not our thoughts. We're not, no. We certainly are not. We're not our mind. And and all that our thoughts are is, is the mind. That's all that the mind is. It's just a bunch of thoughts, bunch of memories and thoughts. And we are not those. No, the mind, our mind and thought are a tool, but mm. they are not who we are. And, and how you know that you are not that is because if you had, if, if we were our thoughts or we were our mind and our mind is only thoughts, then every time we had a thought, a little, and, and it went, a little bit of us would disappear with it. Mm. So a thought would come and go. And if we notice we're here before a thought comes and we're here fully intact after it goes. And so we're the one that's watching those. We mm. are the incredible being that we are that is very silently sitting in the background of our life mm. and we're not noticing it because the world is so razzle dazzle and the mind is so busy busy and all of that is covering up the wonderful one that we truly are um, that's just watching the whole parade go by and that one is the one the knowing one when you had that knowing that was that was the, the true everlasting eternal you is had when you have that core like yeah hmm, that some this deep that's sense. the real you that's yeah. the real you because the real you is knowing yeah that's one of its qualities that nothing else can be knowing but but the one that you really are the yeah. eternal one and so we have this incredible body and this amazing world full of all spectacular things to enjoy um but this is a temporary mm. you know the body is just temporary it's not who we are either and the mind just isn't who we are and so we need to use it for what it's meant for which is to create what we want mm. and not allow it to be our psychiatrist beat us up our torturer our um yeah our psychotherapist and not to give it that authority because yeah most of the time we've given it ultimate authority over us. And so we will believe a thought as it comes into our head. I remember this wonderful teacher, Adi Ashanti, mm. and when he was a child, he looked at adults and he couldn't understand why they believed their own thoughts. He thought it was incredible that adults mm. believe their own thoughts. Can you imagine being a child and realizing that? I mean, there are majority of the population 
believe their own thoughts as though they are fact and as though they are reality. Yeah. And of course, when we believe them, woo, then they manifest like yeah. that. You so know? it's it just perpetuates and then you believe it more because you see the evidence of it. <laughs> it's exactly. It's crazy. And I, I, when I read The Greatest Secret, I like got this. It's almost like I got like somebody gave me a new pair of glasses oh, good. and I put it on and I was like, oh, my gosh, what's going on up here? I don't have to believe it all the time. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So so talk a little bit about one of the techniques that you give in that book that I love. And I've been practicing and I've I've stumbled a little bit. So I'd, I want to. Oh, uh, good. Uh, pick your we brain help, on this. We can help you with it. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. I love it. It's the welcoming process. Yeah. Uh, how that, and I just had a ton of family in my house. Uh, and my sister, you know, came, my big sister was with me for two weeks. My grown daughter is home, you know, with me. And so all this, you know, tension was surrounding me. And I oh, thought, yeah. well, just welcome it. Yeah. That was hard. How was it? I, yeah. So explain to us the welcoming process and does it get easier as you do it more? Yes. Like, like right now, um, for example, in the, uh, two nights ago, I woke up in the middle of the night and I had like a really high temperature. Well, amazing because I never have anything like that. And my body felt really hot and I thought, whoa, this is weird. So what I did was I just welcomed it right out of existence like explain yeah. that so what is that like so, what's the thought process like I'm so happy you're here like yeah, do you agree so, with the, it? so the thing is the thought process is you wanting to get yourself to the no thought then mm. it will be released mm. and so and so what the welcoming practice is just helping you get to be before the mind or over the mind, you've got to jump over the mind. So everything that I suggest for the welcoming practice, and I'll go through it with you now, is for one reason only, and that is to have the mind just drop mm. so that there, the mind isn't there because when the mind isn't there, everything comes back into harmony immediately, including your body, okay? It's just because everything's energy, and so if there's anything manifesting in the body, it's energy and it will just leave. So, and so it's always hard to describe something that is ethereal, you know, that's invisible, mm -hmm. but right. I seem to write only about invisible things. <laughs> we appreciate that. We're grateful for that. Yeah, right. Um, and so welcoming is like surrendering. I'm going to use a lot of words so everybody can get the feeling of it. Um, welcoming is releasing any negative energy, whether that's negative thoughts, negative ideas about a subject, negative feelings, negative memories, traumatic memories, um, even physical sensations. And so all of those things can be released and through the welcoming practice. And so it's releasing. It's also known as letting go. Mm -hmm. um, it's also known as surrendering. And so basically what we're doing is we're getting ourselves to a place of effortlessness. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so if you open your attention all, all of the time, we are focused. We, our attention is completely focused. It's narrowed in and that's the mind. The mind, we focus on one thing after another, after another, a thought inside, outside, we're always focused. And so what we want to do is we want to drop the mind and therefore open our, open our attention so we're not focused anymore. So if you imagine that you focused on something and right now everybody most likely is focused, so you know what that feels like, that focus. You can okay. tell what it feels like. And so what I want you to do is you've got your attention on something is I want you to just open your attention, open it up. Okay. And when you open your attention, you should just have a moment of stillness of no mind yep. when you open it. So open your attention and just stay like that. Mm. And that's actually it. 
because when you open your attention, you are releasing. So say, for example, um, when I had that, the body was hot and everything. So when I had that, um, I just immediately opened my attention. Now I've been doing it so much that it's just, I don't, I don't even do anything. I don't even feel like I do anything, but I just open my attention. And what, what people will feel is you feel what the moment you open your attention is you feel some relief mm-hmm. in the body, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Straight away. You feel some relief. That's all you do. That is it. Just open your attention and then whatever was negative around you will be released. So if it was a belief, like if you spot a belief, for example, or if you have a traumatic memory and you bring that traumatic memory to mind or you just get an image of it and you hadn't thought about it for a long time, but now an image of it just appeared, an image appeared of it because it's ready to be released. Okay. That's why it's appeared. And so straight away, you can just open your attention, which is like, you know, I think I explained in the secret when you're taking a photograph and you're taking a close up and you focused on an object or a face, for example, and you open up the lens. So you're taking a wide shot, then you're not focused on anything. Hmm. at all it's just the whole picture nothing in the picture has any um, priority over anything else or any focus over anything else it's a similar kind of thing is in terms of opening your attention and I think one of the things that I said too is for welcoming is that it can sometimes help to open our arms out and the reason for that is we are often very contracted Mm -hmm. without realizing it yeah um for example I've just been to the dentist and I was in the dentist chair (laughs) and I'm usually really relaxed or they say I'm a great patient and I feel I'm fine but I for one second I just saw that my hands were Mm. I kind of had them across and they were really sort of clenched I was so surprised that the body was doing that and so what I did was I just took my hands and I put my hands with my palms mm. face up on the chair and you can't be all tensed up if your mm. palms are facing up right oh, because that's like that. a real position of surrender yeah so that's why the welcoming practice because you open your arms and your palms up and you are kind of surrendering um, and that also helps you kind of open your attention as well and so all you know probably when people first start out when you open your attention you'll just have a brief second of relief Mm -hmm. and the mind will be back Mm. it'll boom jump back in okay and sort of you know be dancing around saying look at this hey look at this she shouldn't have said that you're going to be late you know where did you put your phone <laughs> yes of kinds of meetings, right it does and that so, yeah <laughs> All <laughs> yeah. Of the time, you know like an incessant flatmate who never ever shuts up that's right, right? Yep. the time you wake up in the morning is just non-stop chitter 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 so but you you can have a life where that isn't the case so so yeah so that's what it's really like so it's opening a wel- your attention so what i hear is it's more of a welcoming of a broader sense and a broader energy whereas when we're trying to solve problems we tend to be contracted and tight we so do. what you're saying is welcome a a, a a bigger perspective of you. Yes, because all we're trying to do is get the mind out of the way. Yeah. You see, the, yeah. the mind is wonderful if you're applying it for what you want. But in any case, life will deliver to each and every one of us far more than we can even imagine or conjure up with our mind. But And so the really wonderful thing is in opening your attention, the body will automatically begin cleaning itself it's like my teacher would say a self-cleansing mechanism and so for the time that your attention is open then all of the energy is being released and Mm. that energy is what keeps us unhappy Mm -hmm. you know um, right that makes us sick yeah it makes us sick for sure Mm -hmm. yeah all of those things and so 
being able to open your attention like that or release in the welcoming practice it's just the best thing like for me the most powerful thing any human being can do in their life mm -hmm. because that is what I have done and just when things appear if I notice there's an opinion about something I would just be like whoa look at that you know mm -hmm. and just release it and then memories and just release it and uh any kind of subject that maybe had an emotional charge around it and just release it. And there isn't anything that can get me disturbed anymore. And I'll just say to everybody, you've got to do it. Yeah. Just do it. Just be free because you will be free of the torment of your mind and, emo and emotional, negative emotions and emotional disruption in your life and just to be free of that to wake up and be free of that is just oh, the best profound yeah, yeah profound. do you think do you think talking about our problems helps us in any way talking about the solutions helps us okay <laughs> but if 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 we look at the law of energy then anything that we and the law of mind then anything we focus on will gets bigger as simple as that yeah. You know, there's just no way around that. So you know, if we, we get we are to... really powerful, we're so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So if we get with a friend and we start bitching about something with our friend, we're only magnifying that problem. Yeah. 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 We're, we're not helping it. ourselves feel any better. We may, it, no. I, I actually think you get a dopamine rush maybe in the moment. Yeah. But, you might. but mm -hmm. that's it. It's almost like it's addictive. Yeah. It's, uh, Focusing on our problems isn't the answer. Finding the solutions is, is the answer. And, and do you know, the funny thing is when you release or when you, you've done releasing, just don't have any more problems. Mm. You know, nothing appears as a problem at yeah. all. Oh, yeah, you're that. just so easy about everything. And, uh, and just to be free of that too. I mean, I understand, you know, people go to therapists and they, you know, talk through problems and, and I'm not, that's up to everybody to, right. you know, what they want to do in that regard. But uh, in terms of the way life works, what we focus on, we magnetize in our life. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so is there language you need, we can use? I'll use the example. Um, when my sister got divorced, this was a couple, you know, 15 years ago, um, we were just learning about the law of attraction. And mm. so we had a deal with each other where she would call me and she'd be like, I need to vent for five minutes. And then I'm going to turn, I, I, I want to turn and I need you to help me turn to the, like what you just said to the mm. solution. And it was really beautiful. And it then all of a sudden the venting became two minutes and then it became one minute. And then we right. got more excited about talking about the solution. Right. Can, can we bring the concepts you're teaching to our relationships and change the languaging with the people closest to us and say, hey, I don't want to bitch about stuff anymore. I want to move more towards the solution. How do we how do we come up with a common language with people so that we can create better conversations in our life? Or mm. do we just walk away from the ones where people are complaining around us? Or does it not matter because we can't control anybody around us? Well, we can't control anybody around us. And, and the, the, the happier you become, then, then you're not going to come into contact with the complaining ones. Yes. You know, because the, the, just the law of energy will keep you apart. So when they're complaining, you won't be around them. And or it doesn't affect you in any way. You completely mm. see that the one that is complaining is believing the thoughts in their mind mm. and that they're doing it to themselves. Mm. You know, they're hurting themselves. And, and it's up to everybody to find their way to happiness. I mean, in the end, we all have the same destination. You know, we're all going to go home. And, yeah. um, and so for some, some will go home earlier than others. And, and but every single one of us will go home and every one of us is eternal. So, so you know, we could probably really lighten up about lighten up about this physical physical world. Yeah, I'm just trying to think what I did. I, with the secret, I was aware that it was so important for me to feel good that 
if I woke up, let's just say on the wrong side of the bed and something aggravated me and I just wouldn't answer my phone, I wouldn't open emails because I knew on that frequency of aggravation, mm. all the aggravating circumstances would come into my would life. Come in. And so I we created in the secret, secret shifters, things, mm. you know, to put on a piece of music that really sort of made your heart sing. And, and so these days I would say, so that's what I did for the secret and it worked brilliantly. But these days, jumping then to the greatest mm. secret, I would see every one of those circumstances as the greatest gift to mm. be given and I would release mm. because everything's an inside job. Mm. Like everything, it's all an inside job and you can be free of any impatience you feel about somebody else or any drama that you feel, you can be free of it. And just the moment it appears and the moment you've got emotion is the time that you can just open your attention. Mm. And so in the welcoming practice, you are not trying to change anything. To give people an idea of what we're doing here is you're not trying to change what you're feeling. You're not trying to fix it. You're not trying to get rid of it. You're not trying to do any of that. You are allowing it to be here just as it is mm. and in the allowing of it to be here it evaporates amazing because the only thing that makes it stay is our resistance to it interesting so that person that's driving you crazy you mm. could say oh i'm so happy you're driving me crazy today totally. i because now i get to practice the welcoming practice yeah. And you get to release some energy. And that person, and this is the truth, that person appeared to press that button of yours because you are ready to be free of aggravation. Ooh, Ooh that's, that's powerful. that's why they're there. Every single person in your life is an angel, truly, mm. delivering something to you to enable you to be free. Every circumstance. Is the, is the same, has the same purpose. And so, I mean, I love it now if something comes up and, it, and I feel a charge, like it's so alien mm. that when I feel a charge, like I'm almost like, well, that's what it feels like. Oh, I, I used to think <laughs> like that. I've forgotten what it used to feel like. Um, and then I just, do you know what? The moment I notice it, it's gone. Like it's so fast now. There's wow. kind of nothing for it to stick to, yeah. you know, and oh, it's a beautiful thing because we are really, really um, governed by our feelings. We do yeah. everything based on how we're feeling. You know, we'll move towards something because we think it will make us happier or we will move away from something because we think we will not be as happy mm. with it. And so we are constantly playing this game all of the time and that's where we have given authority to the mind because mm. the mind is our emotions too mm. I mean it's got it's got the two things together it's got thoughts and feelings and together those things create memories and beliefs and it's just like this little package that can send us round and round the mulberry bush yes <laughs> <laughs> yes it can which is why I love the tool. I thank you for clarifying the welcoming practice because I actually went back to the book, read it a couple of times, that one section. I, I practiced it and now I, I feel much clear, more clear on it. Oh, so. good, good. I know, I, know it's, uh, I know it's a little tricky uh, for sure for people. And uh, I know because I do some lives, you know, Facebook and Instagram lives and, and people asking questions and often there will be a question around it. Mm. And I just use that opportunity to go over it again. And, and I know I've received some letters from people where they said they'd read the book and they're really struggling with the welcoming practice. And then they watched the live and they're like, oh, I got it because you said something differently. But yeah, it's worth it to persevere because it is your path to absolute happiness. And of mm. course, as you release all of those things, everything you've ever wanted comes to you. 
it just falls everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So when I, when I hear you talk, I think we're doing life all wrong. People are in general. Yeah, totally right. It's opposite. Life works in the opposite way. Yeah. What we think. Yeah. So what, how do we, and then I think, oh my gosh, if we could get everybody to understand what you understand, the world would be a really different pl- place. P- there would, would be, be a lot, a lot less suffering, but yeah. it starts with us figuring it out for ourselves. It does. Yeah. And everybody, um, you know, my teacher used to say to me that uh, you haven't suffered enough yet. You know, if we are not seeing, if I was not seeing something or she would say, you just haven't suffered enough yet. When you've suffered enough, then you'll do it. And truly, I think it's the case, Mm. you know, even though none of us want to suffer, but we keep doing the same things over and over and over and and inflicting suffering and sabotaging our own life. Yeah. Every single person should have everything that they ever want. And, um, and if we are not experiencing that, having that, if we are not happy all of the time, then it's because we are doing something that is robbing us of our true nature mm. because we are happiness, we are beauty, we are innocence and love and um, all the intelligence and power that there is. And so any thought that is contradictory to that is sabotaging us. We are far Crazy. more than just this human experience. Yeah. far far more crazy and who we are is here all of the time mm. all yeah. of the time crazy yeah. so i'll ask you what i asked bruce lipton when i spoke oh, with yes. him in uh, the spring you know there has been a lot of swirling chaos just in the world in general i feel like in the well i think everybody would agree yeah. but that there's a part of me that says maybe there's a breakthrough happening maybe there, to your point, people are starting to suffer so much that they're now open to hearing another way. Do you think we're having a, a breakthrough as a society right now? I don't think you believe in breakdowns, I would, I would guess, <laughs> now that right. I've spoken with you. Um, I, I think in the world we will see, and if we look back through history, there were times where, uh, where life was very dark and thinking mm-hmm. was very dark. And then there will be a time where there seemed to be light to come through. Mm. Like a hundred years ago, there were all of the new thought leaders. And for some years, there was just this incredible kind of light and people realizing the power of their thoughts. And then it was so extraordinary as the century continued the last century, it gradually sort of, you know, closed over. Mm. And so went back into the darkness again. So there's like this cycle, mm. cycles, I think, that happen. And without a doubt, and it doesn't have to be this way, I want to say to everybody, yeah. is it doesn't have to be that you have to suffer to see your way out. Yes. It just Thank does you. seem to happen that way. Yeah. And But it's not true. It is not true. I mean, yeah. all of the big breakthroughs I've had is when I was really suffering. <laughs> But it, it's like hitting a it, wall. Yeah, I, I know it doesn't have to be that way at all. Um, yeah. It's just, I think you're right. I think when we're suffering, we really open up and we listen, yeah. right? And yeah. people, I think with the, with the current situation in the world and, the, and COVID, people experience fear at a level that they've potentially not experienced before. And young people were so afraid that the world was going to end mm. and, uh, and they had never experienced anything like that. So it was, a, I think it was an incredible wake up call mm-hmm. to the world yeah. um, that you, you're going the wrong way. And you can be sure when we have something, a global situation like this, that affects everybody, that we are being made to take a right turn or a left turn but you know we're being turned and I I think for sure that's what happened because like we people have the idea that all safety and security came from working hard and having money and 
But do you know what? There was no safety and security or there was the appearance of no safety and security yes. when this swept through. It didn't matter what kind of house you had or what kind right. of car, right? This was not a chooser of, uh, of wealth or not wealth or, or working hard. Yes. or um, And so therefore, I, I just think uh, it was a really wonderful message in that way mm-hmm. to, because we have been very materialistic. Yes. And, um, and so it helped us see that there's way more to life than that. I mean, happiness is we all want to be happy. And, and I would say to anybody, you deserve to have whatever ever you want. But those things will never give you permanent happiness. Yes. What The only thing that will give you permanent happiness is discovering who you are. And Love that it. will give you permanent happiness and that can never be shaken. And, and then when you discover that, then everything you've ever wanted kind of comes to you and you don't want it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> right. There is a little bit when I've manifested some amazing things, I've had this, like, it's almost like it shows up and I'm like, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. yeah it's like, not like, yeah, it's, it's so natural, right? Knew that it's, was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. It's so, it's so natural. I yeah. have so many things happen in my life, and to me, they're just life, and and I don't even sort of think anymore. Oh, wow! I manifested that. I'm just like, yep, that's right. That's yeah, amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. the way it works. Yeah, amazing. Well, let me finish up on. I have five questions for you um, that I want to finish on. I and yeah. I just appre- I I just really want to tell you how much. Not only do I appreciate your wisdom, your time, but I've watched some of those lives that you do on Facebook and you can really tell how much you care, how much you want people to grasp this. Like it, it, there is such an authentic quality to you that is so attractive. And I just want to appreciate you for that. Thank you so much. It's incredible. It means um, I'm a big, big supporter of human beings. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I'm... I, I am here for I am here for human beings and yeah. um, I just feel that we are incredibly courageous to take on mm. this physical environment and the duality and all, all of it. Incredibly courageous. Yeah. Um, especially considering who we are. And so the idea of being able to help one being to be free mm. is just overwhelming, right? It's yeah. absolutely overwhelming. So yeah, and you you get that sense from you. And I I encourage everybody to go stalk you on on <laughs> on YouTube and Facebook because your your Q and A lives you. are incredible. Oh, thank so, you. So let me start off with this question. You had you, you've been on a, quite a journey over the last couple of years. Lots of new mm. teachings have entered your mind. If there was a book or a teaching that you would encourage people to go seek out outside of your own, is what what would that be? And books, we we really lean on a lot of books on this podcast. So is there yeah. a book oh, you good. would recommend? Yes. Yeah, so um, Lester Levinson was extraordinary. Mm. And uh, he didn't write any books, but his quotes and everything were put down in books. And... Uh, Hale Dwoskin, who is in The Greatest Secret, he became the um, carer of that work. And so he has put all of Lester's teachings into a book, which is called Happiness is Free. Mm. Um, And Mm. so it is filled with all of Lester's books, uh, uh, all of Lester's work. And Lester was the original person who did the releasing. So, uh, So that book is absolutely wonderful. Um, I have the original book that of Lester's by my bedside table, and um, and that is called The Keys to Ultimate Freedom. But all of that that's in that is in Happiness is Free, and The Keys to Ultimate Freedom is out of print, and the copies cost hundreds oh. of dollars, and you can right. get it for fourteen ninety five with Happiness is Free. Beautiful. My The book that I love so much, and I even get tears in my eyes when I think of this book um, and this teacher, is Robert Adams' uh, Silence of the Heart. Mm. And that book, I just can't explain what it is about that book. That book affects me so deeply. Um, I love Robert Adams as a teacher. I think he was incredible. He also 
taught, you know, if I were to put it into my language, he, as a teacher, taught the secret and the greatest secret, the two of them combined. And um, are there, yeah. does he have several books? I, I He does. Yeah. He, again, he didn't write. So it was just somebody taking down everything that he said. Right. Um, here's another book. I think it's like the secret to happiness. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. 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 And I've heard and, you talk about uh, the science of getting rich. That's a great well, book. That book, yes, we have free on our website. Beautiful. And that was the book that woke me up to yeah. the, my first real wake up. Um, so the science of getting rich is the science of getting richer is really wonderful by Wallace Waddles. Yeah. So you can pick that up for free on the secret.tv. Wow. Um, let me think. I mean, there is a free pamphlet of Ramana Maharshi's mm. um, that is really wonderful. And I've forgotten what it's called. But if you go on Ramana Maharshi's website, we are actually going to be having it on our website. Beautiful. So if you want to hang about for a little bit, we will have it on there. And it's a free, it's a free pamphlet. And I think it's just wonderful. He was an incredible teacher. I mean, I read all of the New Thought Leaders. Like I read every one of them. So I, I sense that. Oh, yeah. And I when was, you when you say you trained your mind, a part of that was reading all these books and learning yeah, from all these. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. and amazing. and just realizing the incredible power of the mind. And yeah. and I and also I had had experiences of that in my life because I, I got really interested in hypnosis and mm. in, in just in terms of self-hypnosis. So to remove any habits and things like that really, really early on in my life. And in fact, we were just talking about this the other day when, when I was going to this hypnotherapist and I told him I was about to have a tooth pulled and he said, oh, I'll give you a hypnotic suggestion so you don't need any anesthetic. And I said, okay. And so he gave me the suggestion. I went to the dentist and said, I don't need anything for this tooth. And he's like, oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to pull your teeth out. And I said, no, I don't need anything. I've had, a, I've had a hypnotic suggestion. And he said, okay, I tell you what, I will put the whatever those dental things are. They're like pliers, right? Right. And he said, I'm just going to wiggle it a little bit the tiniest little bit and you put up your hand the moment you feel something and he just took it out whoa yeah yeah so, so I've cool. had things like that in my life you know where um where I just began to see the power of the mind so really when I had the when I read the science of getting rich which was the beginning of just a huge awakening for me yeah I I was off and running I was Amazing. just everything fell it was it fell into place you know, I looked at everything in my life. I'm like, oh my gosh, I created that and that and that and that and that. And um, yeah. How so. much is celebration important when, when you do see a manifestation? I've heard some people say you should just celebrate it. So you keep that energy going. Is that necessary? Um, I find being really grateful is the best yes. thing you can do. Yes. Gratitude yeah. of that if, Yeah. If you're yeah. really grateful because that's of the heart. Yes. And um, and so if you're really grateful, then you just cemented a whole lot more things right. to come. Beautiful. And so just being grateful, uh, I mean, that's the best way for anybody to turn their life around in, in less than 24 hours mm, is gratitude. Yeah. Love it. Gratitude, really sincere, deep gratitude. For years, I used to do gratitude when I woke up in the morning. This was following the secret and during the making of the documentary, I would do gratitude until I had tears in my eyes absolutely every morning. That's and amazing. then I would get out of bed and walk to the bathroom. Thank you with each foot as I walked to the bathroom. And so gratitude's extraordinary. Yeah, wow. really wow. extraordinary. If you could go back to your 25 year old mm. self mm. and give her some advice, mm. what would you say to her? Okay. You create your own reality. <laughs> I would say um, nothing is what it appears to be. Mm. Oh, I love that. And open to the possibility of anything. Yeah, love that. Because one of the things that we do is we love to say we have an open mind. If we describe ourselves, you know, I've got a great sense of humor and I have an open mind, <laughs> but most, for most of us, we 
to have an open that's not reality door. that's not what no. we're practicing no. yes. yeah and so just open to the possibility that the world is not what it appears to be mm. Mm. Yeah, just so it, that, that's just that little bit you know yeah. because the moment we can just open to the possibility we just let in um a way for the truth to reach us and a way for life to present itself to us, which is so far more beautiful than even what we see. Yeah. Do you have, last couple of questions, do you have like a, a ritual that you do every day just to keep your mind in a good place or you, is it just so second nature now? Do you have, do you read books every day? Do you meditate? Mm. Is, or is there a, a habit that you use to keep the mind working in a, in a proper way or in its I'm going to answer way? that in two ways. I'm going to yeah. answer pre the greatest secret mm. and post post releasing. So pre the greatest secret, I absolutely had rituals day and night. And so I did gratitude. I also intended the day. I mm. looked ahead into the day and I saw and asked for the way that I wanted the day to go. Mm. I also did it at night. At night, I looked back over the day and looked for the, the, the best thing about that day mm. and singled out the thing that I felt was the best thing about that day. And I would always have lots of things come up and I would be grateful for each of those things. And then I would intend the next day. Tomorrow is going to be an incredible day. Like I would just experiment. So, for example, I would say tomorrow there is going to be a surprise coming. That is going to be incredible and amazing. And so, and sure enough, there would be. Or I would say tomorrow there's going to be great news. And I can tell you every single time the next day somebody would say to me, I've got great news for you. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Always like that. So, Yes, I had absolute rituals. If I felt that my emotions plummeted, I would use all of the things that I've said in the secret shifters and I would shift myself to feel better. And I really worked at being aware of my thoughts because if you are aware of your thoughts, they no longer have control over you. Love no that. longer. You just have to become aware of them. And I would be aware of how I was feeling as well because that's a really good indicator of what you're thinking. So that was pre-secret. And then post-secret, um, I just, post-secret, I would look for all of the things to release. Mm. And so if something would come up, if I would, somebody was talking about something and I'd noticed there was a little bit of an emotional charge in me, like I had an opinion around that. Opinions mm -hmm. aren't very good for us. They're not very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh -oh. Because they're fixed. Mm. And, um, and so I would notice if I had an emotional charge and then I would just release it. And so post-secret, I just kept releasing everything. When an emotion came, I'd be like, yes, and release it so that I would, so I no longer feel anger. I've released all the anger in Amazing. my body. Amazing. I no longer can have grief. That is impossible. I've released all of the grief. And so most of the emotions now I've released. And if I feel something like this morning, there was like this flash of impatience because my dog vomited on our sofa. Oh. <laughs> and I was getting ready for the lunch. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> to do it. But uh, the, anyway, the moment that I just like noticed it, like it's really interesting, like that energy just bursts into joy, like that impatient energy just goes ah, into joy. Amazing. Um, so, yeah, so I just did all of releasing and then I do not have a mind that delivers thoughts. I only use my mind to think of what I want Impressive. or yeah I, I use it for what it was intended for and when you say do I meditate mm -hmm. I never took the path of cross-legged meditating mm -hmm. for hours and the reason that I didn't do that is because I wanted to reach a huge amount of the population and I didn't think they would do that mm -hmm. I didn't feel like everybody 
would sit down cross-legged and, and meditate for hours. So I wanted to find another way for people to be free. Um, but if you are aware, can I just say this, that if you are aware, you are meditating. Ooh, ooh, that was good. <laughs> that was good. I love that. Okay, last, wow. I, I feel like after this interview, I'm going to sit down for a moment and contemplate a lot of this. This was profound. If you, if you had one message for the world that you could really help everybody see on, in the forefront of their brain, what, what would that message be? Uh, the one and only infinite being that is all the love in the universe that you see. You are the one and only power that exists. You are all the intelligence, all the knowing, all of the beauty. You are complete freedom, total joy. And find that. Have you ever had that moment where you have a thought about something you'd love to see show up in your life and you just feel it in your core. That feeling of knowing is what you're talking about. Yeah. There's nothing better than that. And you know what? I don't get that knowing feeling on everything. I can get a very strong belief 